The cost of EpiPens has jumped from about $100 to $600 in the past six years. That medication treats life-threatening allergies. And that increase has made lots of parents angry and has gotten the attention of lawmakers who want to investigate. So how do drug companies set their prices? Good question. Heather Brown joins us right now. We're hearing about EpiPens, but experts that you talk with say that lots of drugs are seeing these huge increases. They are. Insulin has tripled. Cancer drugs have gone up tenfold in the past decade. MS drugs gone up seven times since the 90s. And you all remember late last year when Turing Pharmaceuticals raised the price of one of its drugs by 5,000%. Well, in the U.S., there are no regulations on what prices a drug company can set. How do drug companies come up with their prices? I have no idea. Whatever they want, you know. <laughs> That's a good question. I would like to know that, too. The pharmaceutical market is not like any other market in the U.S. or in the world. Stephen Schondelmeyer is a drug pricing expert at the University of Minnesota. Somebody other than me, the consumer, chooses what drug I have access to and so I don't get to comparison shop. Drug companies will talk with doctors and negotiate with insurance companies knowing it can cost up to half a billion dollars to bring a new drug to market. Well, a normal company would consider what's it cost to make the drug, what's it cost to market the drug, how do I recover some of my research and development costs, and drug companies weigh all of those into account. And then they say, and what do we think our product's worth in the marketplace and what can we get away with? If they can get it and it's in demand, I suppose they can do it. How is that allowed? Because our Congress has not stepped up and voted to say we want to regulate or manage that price or change the structure of that marketplace. Because we believe in free markets, essentially? I think there's the ideological perspective is there, but also the pharmaceutical companies spend as much or more on lobbying than any other industry out there. Manufacturers will set a number, over $600, but few people generally pay full price with rebates, discounts, and insurance. Well, that's up to insurance to pay for that. It's taking more out of my pocket in insurance premiums. Just to say it's covered by insurance, so don't worry about it, doesn't mean the money magically appears. Because he says his premiums go up, that hurts us, it hurts our employers who pay those premiums, and then consider people who have high deductible plans who do pay closer to that full price. Now, Dr. Schondelmeyer would like for companies to make their prices more transparent and for the government to have more pricing regulations. He says there's a lot of industries where that already happens, utilities, water, cable, so yeah, why so not look into it with drugs? Yeah, because if you think about what you just reported on, yeah. that's yes. really depressing, and there's really no mm -hmm. recourse for no, regular not, people. No, not for regular no. people, no. Unless not you have your own lobbying group. Right. And so, <laughs> I, But the thing is, these drug companies, there can be a big, massive PR campaign, but you haven't seen the price of the EpiPen go down. No. Not, they don't no. always fall to that pressure. My goodness. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Heather. Mm -hmm. And if you have a good question for Heather, please email it by going to wcco.com slash links.